Hello and welcome back to World360. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is under a lot of pressure amid a massive truckers' protest in the Canadian capital of Ottawa. What began as a truckers' protest against cross-border vaccination regulations has now turned into a full-fledged movement against all nationwide COVID rules in Canada and potential government overreach. But now we're seeing momentum building for similar protests in other parts of the world, such as Australia, New Zealand, and potentially the US. There are some major commonalities between these movements. One, there's a strong message of freedom. Two, there's a call to end all COVID mandates that are hurting livelihoods. Three, the Donald Trump factor. And four, anger over online censorship. Now, the Canadian protest called the Freedom Convoy began on 29th January, shortly after a mandate banning unvaccinated truck drivers from crossing the border came into effect. Conservative Party MPs have voiced support for the protests, such as Pierre Polivier, who said, I'm showing up here to support freedom and an end to unnecessary mandates that have no support, no backing by science. A new poll by Canadian market research and analytics company Liga found that even though 60% of Canadians oppose the Freedom Convoy, almost half of them are sympathetic to concerns and frustrations raised by truckers. The poll also shows that Canadians believe Trudeau and his government are partially to blame for the way these protests have escalated because of their quote-unquote condescending attitude towards Canadians who disagree with vaccine mandates and lockdowns. Trudeau has so far refused to meet convoy organizers and referred to them as fringe minority and extremists, which analysts say could just be fanning the flames. In New Zealand now, one of the most vaccinated countries in the world, we're seeing police arresting over 100 people. Protesters camped inside the Wellington legislature's grounds, refusing to leave until mandates were lifted. Now, New Zealand has vaccine mandates for workers in high contact jobs like in healthcare, teaching and the police. There are also vaccine requirements for businesses like gyms and parlors. The government estimates that the mandates in place affect about 40% of the workforce. And now these are the people that are starting to take to the streets. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has told protesters to move on, saying the protests are not a reflection of what the majority in the country feels. Meanwhile, one protester said, Kiwis are not dumb. We are losing our jobs and our lives due to these mandates and restrictions. Meanwhile, in Australia, about a thousand people gathered in front of the parliament at Canberra on Tuesday to express their disapproval of vaccines, with protesters holding signs that read, Mandates are not law, unconstitutional and solidarity. Like New Zealand, Australia too has one of the highest vaccination rates in the world, with almost 93% of the population fully inoculated. Some controversial videos have emerged on social media which show protest leaders urging people to head to Canberra Airport COVID-19 mask vaccination clinic and to harass these people. Some media reports have also noted that there are diverging claims within the Australian protest. Some protesters want COVID-19 vaccine mandates removed. Some believe vaccines are harmful. Some dispute the legality of the Australian government and others believe in full-fledged conspiracies about the safety of vaccines. Let's move on to the US now. No protest has taken place as yet, but momentum is definitely building for a convoy to begin from California right up until Washington DC. Brian Brace, one of the co-organizers of the upcoming People's Convoy, has said this is not an issue of left versus right and has also invited vaccinated people to take part in the protest. Take a look at what he said in a Facebook Live that was later taken down. Uh, this isn't about if you're a Democrat or a Republican, conservative, liberal. Um, it doesn't matter what country you're from. It doesn't matter um, <clears throat> where you align yourself with different segments of society. None of that matters. None of it matters at all. And even though this is going to be about an American convoy, that doesn't mean that it doesn't apply to those of our friends that are in Australia or various countries in Europe or Canadian brothers or down in Mexico, uh, South America, anywhere across the globe where these mandates um, are happening. 
where people are losing livelihoods because of mandates. Um, that's really, that's really what this is. In the video, Brace emphatically says that this is a fight for livelihoods. However, if reports of locals in Ottawa and Canberra being harassed by protesters for wearing masks are any indication, these protests may comprise dangerous fringe elements as well. With the US movement gaining steam, it's no doubt that former President Donald Trump will play a critical role. He has already voiced support for the Canadian protest, calling Trudeau a far-left lunatic. In New Zealand too, a handful of protesters were seen holding American flags or banners in support of Trump specifically. Before we wrap up, it's also worth talking about the role of social media as these protests gain momentum. The US Convoy's Facebook pages have already been taken down once after it reached over a lakh followers. Now, GoFundMe, a crowdsourcing platform, got into a sticky situation as well after it took down the Canadian protests fundraising page for violation of its guidelines. GoFundMe has since announced it will be refunding all the proceeds raised by the Canadian Freedom Convoy. Now, keep in mind that GoFundMe is an American company based in San Diego. So when it took action against the Canadian protest, Four U.S. states, Florida, Louisiana, Ohio, and Texas, said they will be investigating the company for alleged deceptive practices within their state. The attorney generals in these four states had earlier received a little nudge from Donald Trump's eldest son. This, however, didn't stop GoFundMe from removing the Australian Convoy's fundraising page and promising to refund about $179,000 to donors. With trucker protests in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and now the US gaining momentum, it is possible that similar movements may crop up in Europe or other parts of the world as well. Thank you for watching. This is Pia Krishnkuti for The Print. Do subscribe to The Print Online and follow us on social media.